everyone, it's Christmas. My name is Emily and I'm the pastor for Epic Online and I'm so glad that you're here. We're gonna get started with the song from our band, Epic MSC. It is a lot of fun and it's all about celebrating the birth of Jesus. You guys, you guys ready? Let's go. to a special Christmas episode of Epic Everywhere, practical teaching to help you grow in your faith no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. My name is Emily and I'm the pastor for Epic Online. And as we get started today, I know we have a bunch of you who are new today, so welcome. Whether someone invited you or you found us through a search or a scroll, I'm really glad that you made it. And what an episode we have ahead with more great music, some special moments, and a powerful message from our lead pastor, Ken. And whether it's your first time here or you've been hanging out with us for a while, as your pastor, I want to do everything I can to set you up to get connected and to keep growing. So the first step towards that is to let us know you're here and to get connected to some resources that we think will be helpful for you to make the most out of your experience. So we're going to go ahead and text 
in. You can go ahead and text the word here to the number on the screen, 215-999-8575, or you can scan the QR code. And then when you text us, we'll text you back with a link to our Next Steps Hub with everything you'll need for today. And if you are new around here, be sure to text in because when you do, I'm gonna mail you a Christmas gift from us here at Epic, a free, super comfy, might I add, t-shirt, just to say thanks for being here. You know, the holiday season is filled with all kinds of joy, but it can also be really tough for some of us. Whether you're going through something right now or something's heavy on your heart or your mind, we wanna be in your corner. We love the opportunity to pray for you over this Christmas season as we end the year. So you'll see a spot for you at the top. Let us know how we can pray for you right there. You'll also see a link to our care page on the Hub. Our team put together some encouraging resources that may be helpful, including a care for the holidays section. So be sure to check that out on the Hub. Well, Christmas is right around the corner and so is 2024, but we didn't want to miss the opportunity to really look back and see all that God's done in 2023 and all that you guys have been a part of. So go ahead and check this out. Our city is home to more than 1.5 million people. And as diverse as we all are, the truth is that we're not all that different. We're all looking for hope. We all want our lives to have meaning and purpose. We all need human connection and community. We're all searching for peace in a world that feels anxiety. Hope, meaning, community, peace. All of us long for these things, but many struggle to find them. More and more people deal with the pain of life by trying to escape, which has led to an epidemic of addiction, loneliness, and filling our lives with anything to distract from the emptiness we feel. This is all evidence of the fact that people are searching. But the deepest needs of any human can only be met in a relationship with the God who created them. And that's why the church, and specifically a church like ours, is more important than ever. See, we want Epic to be something different, there are lots of churches for church people, but there aren't a lot of churches for everyone. That is who we are. See, we believe that every person matters. That's why every Sunday, whether online or in person, we work hard to make sure Epic is a place where everyone is welcome, everyone is needed, everyone is known, and where everyone has the opportunity to be changed by God's power in their lives. We know that the next generation matters, so we do all we can to equip, encourage, and inspire students to own their faith and live it out boldly. We believe they aren't just the church of tomorrow, but that their time is now, to lead now, to love now, and to make a difference now. Our kids are learning about Jesus on their level, and it's making a difference not just in church, but at home and school. Every week, our team creates meaningful and memorable experiences as they partner with parents to set an anchor of faith in the heart of each child that will stay with them and serve as a foundation for the rest of their lives. In all, Epic has grown by 46% over last year, and we're seeing more and more people who are far from God discover that they don't have to be. But we aren't just growing in number. Together, we're on a journey to grow in our love for God and others. So every week, we gather in locations in and around our city to learn and worship God together. Then during the week, we connect in smaller groups online and in each other's homes to build meaningful relationships, to grow in our faith, and to pray for each other. This is where true community is found, and we learn to do life better together. We believe the most appropriate response to the extravagant love of God is to love others extravagantly. So through This Is Love, we partner with some of the best organizations in our city and mobilize our church to unleash a wave of generosity and love through service and giving. This year, in just one month, we served more than 750 hours and gave over $31,000 to those in need. At a night to remember our prom for people with disabilities, we pull out all the stops to make sure every single one of our guests doesn't just know their love, but feels their love too, ensuring that it really is a night that they'll never forget. What God is doing through you and what we're building together is something special. We will be a devoted church, loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We will be a generous church, putting God's love on display for people through our service and giving. And we will do whatever it takes to be a growing church, not just in number, but in our faith too. We're on a mission 
to see every person in the city follow Jesus. So as long as there are still those who are broken, those who are hurting, those who are about to give up, as long as there are still people who haven't had their life changed by Jesus yet, we won't stop. We will never stop. We're all in. I gotta keep myself together. Man, watching that really overwhelms me, but in the best kind of way. I'm just so grateful that I get to be part of a church that is on mission to reach every person in the city. And we're running hard after that. You can tell by watching that video. So thank you to each and every one of you for being here, for being part of serving and giving, really to make it all possible. And as Kent said, you know, there are big things on the horizon for 2024, but we can only move at the pace of your generosity. So I wanna invite you to give today. You can do that on the Hub or by heading to epic.church slash give. Of all the things we invest in, I don't know about you, but investing in eternal life for others, there's nothing more incredible than that. Well, the time has come for today's message, so let's get to it. Christmas, everybody. Listen, I'm so glad that you're celebrating Christmas with us today, uh, especially if it's your first time with us. Uh, my hope is that we're able to help make Christmas a little more special for you this year. Now, Christmas is a time of year when we all come together. I love that part of it. Uh, but it's also a time of year that brings up some things that we can be pretty deeply divided over, if you know what I mean. Uh, for example, so there are wrapped gift people only, and then there are the just throw in a gift bag and call it a day kinds of people, right? And even now there's a just leave it in the Amazon box kinds of people. That's a whole other category. Uh, then there's the wait for Christmas morning to open up any gifts at all, like the purists among us. Uh, and then there's the, hey, at least open one or maybe two or maybe even all the gifts the night before, you know, so you can sleep in. You know, listen, if you're, if you're not opening at least one gift on Christmas Eve, you are wound way too tight. Like you need to loosen up just a little bit. I'm just saying. That's a thing. So to all the kids that are watching, you're welcome. All right. Uh, there's the eggnog people. And then there's what I would consider sane people, right? Like, what are you doing trying to drink eggnog? That don't make no sense. Something called eggnog? I mean, how are you going to drink some eggs? That's gross. Or nog, for that matter. What even is nog? I don't know what it is, but it sounds disgusting. You should not do that. You need Jesus. What's wrong with you? All right. Uh, there's scented candle people, like regular scented candle people, and then there's the holiday scented candle people, and you know who you are with your evergreen and your balsam and your holly jolly peppermint gun drop nonsense that you got going on, right? Uh, and then probably the most divisive of all things, there's the real tree people and the fake tree people, you know what I'm saying? No, I gotta tell you, uh, I was a real tree people my entire life. And part of the reason why is because um, even after I got married, my parents would go every year with us to go pick out our tree and then they would pay for it. Now that ship has sailed, they don't do that anymore. And so I had to start paying and, and here's what I discovered. I discovered that real trees are getting real expensive, like real expensive. So uh, we just kind of, you know, bit the bullet and bought a fake one. Uh, buy once, cry once, that's, that's my motto. Um, and I gotta tell you, like it's, it's okay. In fact, can I, can I tell you what I hate about it? Like it's perfect, like a little too perfect if you ask me. See, I don't know about you, but I need a tree that's a little more like real life. Like I need a tree that looks like it's been through something. I need a tree that's got some regrets in life. I need a tree that, that looks like it's having a hard year or something like that, you know? Uh, I need a tree that, that only has one good side. Like you can't look at it from all the sides. There's only one good side. I need a tree with some bald spots that you gotta spin around and put toward the wall or, or over in the corner. Uh, I need a tree with a top that just kinda, it's going like this and then all of a sudden at the top it just kinda 
It's kind of does that number, you know what I'm talking about? Where you gotta decide whether like, okay, well, you know, the tree can be straight, but then the top's gonna be like this, or the top can be straight, but then the whole tree's gonna have a lean. You gotta make that, make that decision, right? Uh, I need a tree that looks like it's struggling to hold it together, you know, like some, some needles are falling off and you know, it doesn't always smell right. And, and here's the reason why, because that's real life. Like it's a whole lot more like real life. Honestly, I need a tree that I can identify with that's been through something. Come on, here's what I know. If you want it to be perfect, then it's gonna have to be fake. If you want it to be perfect, then it's gonna have to be plastic because the real thing is gonna have a few flaws. And I think what's true about trees at Christmas is also true about life. Like if you want it to look perfect, then it's gonna have to be fake, plastic. Because the real thing is gonna have a few flaws. A Christmas, I think, is one of those times when we kind of want it to be perfect. You, you know what we want? Like we want to wake up on Christmas morning rested. How about that, you know? Uh, we want presents to be perfectly wrapped underneath the tree. We want to take a seat on the couch or in the Lazy Boy with our coffee. We want to be sitting there and, and have the fireplace on. We want the perfect music playing in the background, right? We, we want the kids to sleep in until we wake them up, you know what I'm talking about? And then we just want to be able to just sit there, just take it, take it all in. Isn't that nice? Now, we, we want all the people that we love and care about to be there and to have gotten there on time. And we want everybody there to be in a good mood. And whenever it is time to open up the presents, we want our six-year-olds to just wait patiently for their turn. And then whenever it is time for them to open their gift, we just want to hear two words. You know what they are. Thank you. That's it. Like, even if they got socks, we want them to say thank you. Like, wouldn't that be perfect? Like, don't you want something kind of like that this Christmas? I mean, it's kind of nice, isn't it? Well, sorry, it's not real life, all right? That's the end of that. See, Christmas and in this life, they are not without their flaws. But that's okay, because the good news of Christmas is, is that it came into a very imperfect and broken world. That the greatest gift ever given came into the middle of a mess. And that gift was given to you, it was given to me, it was given to us. It's Jesus. And for the last few weeks, we've been working our way through this verse in Isaiah chapter 9 that describes some of what's so great about this gift. Here's what it says in verse number 6. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, which will be great because that means we can get it off of ours. Come on, somebody. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here we see that, that God so loved the world, that he so loved you, that he so loved me, that he gave his son Jesus as a gift to us. And here we see that, that Jesus is a wonderful counselor, which means that he, he came to help us with this life, that we don't have to do it alone. That he came to, to help us get some things right before we ever get some things wrong. And I know some people say, well, you know, I don't, I don't need any help. Like, I'm the kind of person who just kind of has to learn things the hard way. And to that, I'd say, that's dumb. Like, don't, don't do that. Why would you do that? Come on, life's too short. Life's too hard for us to go around learning everything the hard way. Listen, there's a cheat code. His name is Jesus. He's a wonderful counselor, which means he doesn't have just human wisdom. No, he has divine wisdom to be able to help lead and guide our lives. And gang, when you finally let him do that, when you finally let him lead, finally let him guide, finally let, you, let him begin to direct your steps and direct your life, it will leave you and everyone else full of wonder, which is why he's called the Wonderful Counselor. But he's not just that. He's a mighty God, which means that there's nothing that he can't do. Like, yes, he came as one of us. He put on flesh so that he knows what it's like to be us, to walk in our shoes. But he's, he's not so much like us that he's not any help to us. He, he's not so much like us that he can't do the things that we need a mighty God to be able to do, like intervene on our behalf and rescue us. 
He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God. And it says that he's an everlasting father, which means that the God of the universe, the creator of all things invites you and invites me to relate to him as a good heavenly father. That every time you think of God, you've been invited to think of him as a good heavenly father. That's who he is. That means he's for you. That means he loves you. That means he invites you to be adopted into his family as a son, as a daughter. He's a good heavenly father. He's an everlasting father. And then it says that he's the prince of peace. Now, the Hebrew word for peace here is this word shalom. You ever heard that word before? And then it essentially means wholeness or completeness. And so here we see that Jesus is the, the prince of peace, that, that, he's, that he is a gift of wholeness in your life, that he brings completeness to a person's life. Now, if you back up a few verses and you read through the passage, you notice a few things I want to point out. The first thing you notice is the word government. And the idea here in this passage, you can read it for yourself, is that the government is broken. You think? I mean, even way back here, they knew it. Like way back then, they knew. But the idea also is that one day, the Prince of Peace, the one who makes things complete, the one who makes things whole, will come and make the government what it was originally intended to be. That Jesus would take his place as the king, as the head. And here in this passage, we see that not only is the, is the government broken, but one day will be made whole. We see that the world is broken, that the days are dark, but that into the darkness, a light has dawned. And Jesus has come to push back the darkness, that the government is broken and the world is broken. And, and if I'm honest, I'm broken. I mean, I'm, I'm broken. Like we're, we're right around the corner from, uh, from a new year where I'm sure many of us are gonna make New Year's resolutions, which in my case probably will just confirm the fact that I can't even live up to, live up to my own standards, let alone God's. But here in this passage, we see that Jesus came to make all things new, that he came to redeem all things into what they were originally intended to be. And that includes you and that includes me. That he came to rescue us from our own brokenness. That in him, we could be made whole. That in him, we could be made complete, lacking nothing. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father and he's the prince of peace. What an incredible gift he is. So let's back up to verse number two because part of what I want you to see today is, is what, what scenario or what circumstances this gift was given into. So Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, it says this, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You see, the gift of Jesus was sent into the midst of people who were living in deep darkness. I don't know about you, but I find that extremely comforting. That the gift of Jesus isn't just for perfect people with perfect circumstances, but that Jesus came as an answer to the brokenness that we see in the world around us and the brokenness that we see in our own lives. It's interesting to me that even in the very first Christmas, we, we see that there was, there was no room for Jesus in the end, in the end. It's almost like, like there was no room for Jesus in the perfect places, like in the ideal places. And so Jesus had to be born in a barn, born in the cold, born in the dark, in a mess. And it's almost like, like a foreshadowing, like he's saying, listen, that's, that's what I came to do to get right down in the mess of all of it and fix what's broken. Now, you think about that, he went from the end and had to go and, and, and give birth, be in the barn. Can you imagine the conversation between Mary and Joseph whenever they kind of were working all that out? I mean, here Mary is, she's nine months pregnant. She's about to pop, about to go into labor. Um, they've been traveling all day long by donkey, which I'm sure was not comfort plus at all. Right? They get to the end and Joseph has to tell Mary that there isn't a room. I'm sure Mary was like, well, but didn't you get a reservation? Joseph was like, I, I thought I did, but I bet Mary was just like, really, Joseph? Like, are you serious? Joseph's like, Mary, I, I, and she's like, you know what? It's fine. 
It's fine, it's fine, Joseph. And thus began the first silent night. I'm here all week, folks, making all kinds of jokes. Anyways, Jesus didn't come into perfect circumstances. No, he came into a mess. He came into our darkness to bring light, to bring hope, to bring wholeness, to bring peace, completeness. Now, darkness conceals, but light reveals. Darkness keeps things hidden. Light exposes things. Now, I want to share with you three things that this light, the light of Jesus, into this world reveals. The first one is this. The light reveals who God is. Listen, Jesus was God with a bod. And so if you want to know what God is like, then you just have to look at Jesus. You have to look at what he did and what he said and who he spent his time with. For example, Jesus loved to be with people who are nothing like him. Like if you look at the life of Jesus, you follow along, you notice that, that even though he was um, the most religious person who ever lived, he spent very little time with religious people. And although he was the most righteous person who ever lived, he, he spent a lot of his time with unrighteous people. That even though he claimed to be from God, that he came from God, that he spent a majority of his time in pursuit of ungodly people, which is odd. Because you would think that the most godly, holy, righteous person who ever lived would spend most of his time with other people who would consider themselves godly, holy, and righteous. But the opposite is actually true. And get this, all those unholy, ungodly, unrighteous people, they weren't intimidated by Jesus. They weren't put off by Jesus. They weren't made to feel embarrassed by Jesus. They didn't feel ashamed by Jesus. No, they actually liked Jesus. Even though they had some junk in their life, even though they would probably say, man, if he knew the kind of stuff that I was into, if he knew what I did like last spring break down on the Sea of Galilee, like he has no idea. If he knew about my past, if he knew what was really going on in my life, even though they'd say something like that, they still wanted to be around Jesus. See, Jesus loved being with people that were nothing like him. And people who were nothing like him loved being around Jesus too. King, I think that says something about what God is like. I think that says something about what we should be like as followers of Jesus. And I think it says something about the kind of church that we should be. A place where everyone is welcome. And so, number one, the light reveals who God is. What God is like. Number two, the light reveals who we are. In John chapter 3, um, Jesus has a conversation with a man named Nicodemus. And in this conversation, Jesus is talking about how he is the light of the world. But then he goes on to say this. He says, but men love darkness. They hate the light. And here's the reason why. He says, it's because light exposes. Like the light reveals. Remember, darkness conceals, but light reveals. Listen, I don't know about you, but I look good in the dark. I do. I just look good. I look fine in the dark. But when the lights come on, you see my imperfections. You see my brokenness. You can see my sinfulness. Because the light reveals, the darkness conceals. See, the light reveals who we are. Like, um, facing our own brokenness is a really humbling thing. It's why we hate the light. It's because we don't want to be exposed. But the truth is that every single one of us has been caught with our hand in the cookie jar of sin. Like every single one of us is a sinner desperately in need of a savior. And gang, you need to know that that's a gift that you can't receive without humility. See, pride will rob you of help. See, in order to receive the gift of forgiveness, then you have to be humble enough to admit that you need to be forgiven. In order to receive the gift of salvation, then you have to be humble enough to admit that you need a savior. Gang, this is something that you can't earn. It's a gift that's given, something that you don't deserve. In fact, that's the definition of grace, something that's given to us that we don't deserve. And here's the thing, grace is offensive to the proud because they think they don't need it. For example, if, if for Christmas um, someone got you a book on dieting, depending on who that person was, you might feel some kind of way about that. But if it was someone that you know loves you 
and what's the best for you, and they have permission to speak into your life, and you have permission to speak into theirs, and they're actually trying to be helpful and loving, but you find yourself in a place where you're still kind of mad about it, then in that scenario, you're probably letting pride keep you from help. Listen, don't let pride keep you from seeing yourself how you really are. Just being humble and sober-minded about that. Or, and don't let pride rob you of allowing God to be everything that you need him to be in your life and leaning on him where you're deficient. And so the light reveals who God is. The light reveals who we are. And then number three, the light reveals God's love for you. See, first and foremost, the story of Christmas isn't about what you or I can do to work our way to God, because we can't. We all fall short. The story of Christmas is about what God did to come down to us. It's about how, how God has already said yes to you and to me. Like, yes, you need to be forgiven. And yes, you need a savior. And yes, I'm willing to be that for you. Or, or yes, you belong. And yes, you're beloved. And yes, I want you as part of my family. And I don't know, but maybe you've been running. Like maybe maybe you've, you've kind of been standing arms folded, resistant for a long time. You need to know that all the time, all along, God's arms have been open wide to you. Okay, maybe this Christmas, you might be willing to open yourself up to him and finally begin to move in his direction. In fact, you never know what God might do if you do. Check this out. So I grew up as a Buddhist, in a Buddhist home. I was brought up as a Buddhist, never questioned the faith. You know, it was just something that we were brought into. And then um, when I moved to the States, my faith and my, it, it was really religious. As I got older uh, and then just going off to college and being independent, uh, that's when I started you know, not really connecting with people and then just started drifting away from Buddhism. That's when I fell into depression. Nothing was helping me and I was just, I was just lost. When I was, uh, I think 28, I was sexually assaulted. <laughs> Not once, but um, I think eight months after that, uh, again, so twice. And I just felt like the world was falling apart around me. I felt like I needed to protect myself physically. So that's when I started taking up kickboxing. That's how I met Dee. I think Dee knew what I was. I was struggling with something, but she didn't know what. And then she invited me to um, Epic, thinking that, you know, I just needed a community to be part of. Now, when I was taking kickboxing, my car got broken into a couple of months later. And that's when I lost it. I, I just, I hit the lowest moment, right, of my life. Everything got impacted around me. You know, I don't trust people that much. I, I really don't. Like, even coming to Epic was like, I met people, but I was still cautious about talking to people. And I wouldn't, I, I, I will admit, I had thoughts of suicide, attempted suicide. I remember when I, I don't even know how I went to sleep that night. I, I cried myself to sleep just because because everything was taken away from me. Um, but something in me was like, you know, I have to give it a try. I, I needed to find out. I'm, I'm a curious person. I needed to find out. I've been with Epic for about five years now. I got baptized in 2020 and and it has bring me good memories. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm surrounded by people who, who cares about my well-being. I look around and then like there are people that I can just literally text, right? And they'll be there in a heartbeat. Even when I go back to that dark place, there's that word, hope. He brings hope. Saying that out loud like might not make sense to, you know, people who don't understand, but when, when you've been in that place of darkness, hope to me means a lot more. Like every day I wake up now and I just feel grateful for life. Just, just waking up to me means a lot to me. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful to be here. Yeah. You know, what had happened to me um, doesn't define me. Uh, if anything, like, now I look back at it and I reflect back at it, and that really brought me to him. I'm hopeful and I'm grateful for that. Because yeah, my story's ugly, you know? I think when people look at me, they don't see that because I'm always smiling. <laughs> I try my best to uplift people because I know what it was like to be in that dark place. But in a very interesting way, it brought me to him. So I'm hopeful and grateful.
Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And his name is Jesus. You know what I love about the light? It does so many incredible things. Number one, it chases away the darkness. Remember when you were a kid and you watched a scary movie and you knew you needed to go turn the light on because you were afraid, but it felt like that light switch was like a mile away? And you knew that if you could just, if you could just get there and flip the switch, it would chase the darkness away. That's what happens when the light comes into your life. It, it brightens up your life. It, 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 it makes things clearer to see around you, so it reveals your next step. And probably most importantly, you know what light does? It guides you home. I mean, how many sailors, like, lost at sea have followed the light of a star to get their way home? And how many hikers, maybe lost in the wilderness, have spotted a light off in the distance and followed it to safety? Gang, this Christmas, I'd be willing to bet that there are some of you who just need a light that can come and chase away the darkness, who desperately need a light to come and brighten up your life. It's been far too gloomy, far too long. Who desperately need a light to, to help reveal your next step. What do you do, this direction or that direction? My guess is there's a lot of people who maybe need a light to help guide them home. His name is Jesus. He is the greatest gift ever given, and it was given to us. He's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Remember that word peace, it means shalom. It means wholeness, completeness. And so if you have peace, it means that you're whole. If you have this kind of peace, it means you're complete, that there's nothing missing. And so your heart isn't troubled. It's not just peace in stressful situations. No, it's bigger than that. It's peace in every way. It's having peace with God. In other words, it means that, that you, you don't have this internal sense of fear or dread or a wonder about where you stand with God because you, you've experienced his love. You know his forgiveness. You stand on it. There's nothing between you and him because you know you're in right standing. He is your heavenly father. You have peace with God. You have peace with others. It means there's nothing between you and other people that you aren't angry and holding on to bitterness because you've learned how to forgive because you yourself have been forgiven. Gang, this is huge. You show me someone who's constantly annoyed and irritated, and I'll show you a person who struggles with forgiveness and consequently has no peace. Now, when you have God's peace, you have peace with others. And it gives you peace, thirdly, with yourself. And all of a sudden, you find yourself, you're comfortable in your own skin because you aren't trying to be something that you aren't. Like you're the same person regardless of where you are. Like who you are on the inside is congruent with the person that you project to others on the outside. And the truth is you're not living a lie. Like you don't do things that, that ultimately are gonna harm yourself or do things in secret. Like you're the same all the time. You aren't doing things that are gonna, gonna um, not be beneficial to your life where you're warring against yourself. And so because of that, you can look yourself in the mirror with integrity because you are at peace with you. You see, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, he leads us into peace in every way. Peace with God, peace with others, and peace with ourselves. You can sleep at night because you have that kind of peace. Again, there are some of you that if I were to ask you, do you have peace with God? Your answer would be, I, I'm just not sure. Listen, you're made right with God through Jesus. You just have to admit that you need a savior. And there are also some of you who, who you, you feel far from God. You feel distant from God. You feel separated from God. And you need to know, again, you're just one prayer away, one moment away from connecting with a God who's been reaching out to you. And I can't think of a better time than Christmas to take a step in his direction. If you ask him to be the forgiver of your sin, the leader of your life, then he'll do that. You'll be adopted into his family as a son, as a daughter. Gang, if that's you, like I said, no better time than now to finally step across the line of faith. Ask Jesus to be the forgiver of your sin, your savior. To ask him to be the leader of your life, your Lord. 
And if you're wondering, well, like, what's in it for, for you, Kent? Like, what's in it for me? Listen, I'm just a guy who never got over meeting Jesus. Changed the whole trajectory of my life. And we just want that for everyone else. It's what we're all about. And so we just wanna do our part to help. And so if that's you this Christmas, I'd love to invite you to join me in praying this prayer. Let me lead you in making connection with God that could change everything. Come on, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I ask you to save me. God, make me new. Father, I pray that you'd fill me with your spirit so that I can follow you. God, my life is not my own. I give it all to you. Thank you for your peace. And thank you for new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, if you pray that prayer, I want to be the first one to congratulate you. I want to be the first one to welcome you into God's family. You've been adopted as a son, as a daughter. And I want to encourage you to make sure you let us know about that. You can do that by hopefully you already texted in uh, and checked in. We sent you a link to the hub. There on the hub, there's a button that says, follow Jesus. Click that button so that number one, we can celebrate the decision that you made. And number two, I can send you some information uh, to help you get moving towards some next steps. This is just the beginning of the journey of a lifetime that we wanna partner with you in. So make sure you do that. Hey, the rest of you guys, I just want you to know, listen, Merry Christmas. I hope you're challenged, encouraged. I hope you know that Jesus really is a wonderful counselor, that he's a mighty God, that he is an everlasting father, and he's the prince of peace. Merry Christmas, gang. And listen, in January, we'll be jumping into a series where we're gonna, we're gonna help you with some small habits that can make a really big difference. I'm gonna tell you now so you can be ready. We're gonna jump in at the beginning of January. It's really gonna help you start the year off strong. we will see you then. Love you guys. That message, that song, God is in this house. And I am so thankful for the gift of Jesus in moments like this where we can really pause and remember what that really means and be reminded that He is the Prince of Peace and that changes everything. If you made the decision to follow Jesus today, that's life changing and we wanna know about it so we can support you in that decision. The best thing you can do is just let us know by clicking the button in the hub and we'll go ahead and send you some helpful information so you can take some next steps in your spiritual journey. Well, it has been so special to spend Christmas with all of you and I'd love for you to join us again, but not next week. Next Sunday is New Year's Eve, so we won't have an episode premiering here and we actually won't be meeting in person either, but we will be releasing our best of 2023 playlist right here on YouTube, so check that out. So join us as we kick off the new year on January 7th. Consider yourself personally invited. We're gonna get started on the right foot because let's be honest, we have a lot of hopes and dreams and goals as we start the new year, but we often end up like this girl did. Oh, <laughs> I feel seen. I can totally relate to that. Listen, change isn't easy, but it isn't impossible either. Your future self is a result of the decisions that you make each and every day. And so in our next season, kicking off on January 7th, it's called Mulligan, and we'll see how a few small habits can really change how you see yourself today and transform you into the person that God wants for you to become. Well, before you go, take time to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this with someone you just never know the impact you can have. Well, I'll see you right back here, January 7th.